I mean, I could probably say there are truly some people that are great foster parents. But see, a lot of them, they don't want to get attached to the kids because they don't know when they might transform well, out. I'm going to drop a link, Rich, and you hit it. Hit the link that I dropped. <clears throat> but yeah, that but and then we and then we have these high expectations that they're supposed to be these perfect citizens and they come from these they, and not even they don't even come from family situations, they come from business situations, they come from being something that's like a commodity. Yeah. Motherfucker be but like, yeah, foster oh. parents, like I said, there's some good ones. And see, they can't. A lot of them, they don't like to really get too attached to the kids. Right. Because that way, they know they're going to leave. Right. You know. And so they've had to learn how to detach themselves from not caring about these kids. Because any day they might can be taken away from you. Right. So they can't show the kid love. It's crazy. No emotions. No emotions. Get that link right there, Richie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of these people, a lot of our famous celebrities, right? People that we love, we've listened to their music or the comedians. Y'all have to understand these people are regular people like you and I with more money. Right. They got the same problems we got. Right. Can't no star tell me how to run my life, though. I'm sorry. Jay Z can't tell me about my God. Or politics, right? Because he's just an entertainer. All he can do is rap and entertain. What he thinks, it don't mean nothing to me. I'm not. I, I'm not concerned about. Could you hear me? Jay Z. Yeah. What's going on, Rich? Oh, the hell I'm cool. And good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? Good I'm evening. doing fine. Hi, Richie. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Okay. I think it's an interesting topic. Um, I haven't really been following closely on the um. The whole trial and everything like that but it's just interesting that you talk about group homes and, and foster care and everything like that um right. it, it's crazy because i do agree um it, it just depends i was in and out of a lot of homes um my sister mm -hmm. and i um you know my i don't know it's it, you know i can't say you know I'm, I'm, i was born in the 80s i'm 42 now okay. uh, but i can i can remember pretty pretty vividly you, you don't ever forget anything like that um you know, my dad, he, he wasn't a bad person. Um, and my mother wasn't either. She just, my mother just upped and left, um, left us when she was, uh, when we were what, seven, seven, eight, I was about seven, eight. My sister's younger than me. Right. Um, my father, when my mom left, he had a, he had a major breakdown. Like, uh, he just lost it. And, um, due to that, he yeah. lost us. So wow. I remember. Yeah, so my sister, she, one of my, well, both of my sisters end up living with my aunt, and then I end up living with my grandparents in Philly. <clears throat> so, my grandparents are older; they couldn't take care of me. I was a handful, you know. I'm, I'm not. My mom's gone. My father's gone. I'm not knowing what's going on. So, right. you know, right. I'm, I'm just, I'm being, being a handful to them. And then, um, my aunt that my, had my sisters, she couldn't take care of them, so they end up taking one of my sisters. And me and putting us with a relative to go live with in Philadelphia. So it wasn't foster care yet, but you know, things were really bad. These are like friends of the family. So we lived with them. They had their own kids, but they ended up being very abusive to my younger sister. And I remember um, you know, she had bruises all over her arm. I remember her hiding in a hamper one day. Man. And um I, I picked her up, she's crying, she wouldn't come out the hamper. So I, I pulled her out, said, What's wrong? And she just wouldn't tell me anything. So I looked at her arm. She had like black and blue uh, bruises all over her arm. So, you know, I kind of wild out, you know, 
Right. Um, so man, you know, I would have tore up everybody in the house. <laughs> that's what I did. I started. I, I thought it was the the boys doing it to her. I didn't. I didn't know it was the parents. So I started hitting hitting the boys. You know, they're about my age. Right. So you know, and I remember always getting made fun of. You know, getting bullied outside because you know it's not my neighborhood. So <laughs> the, nobody knows me. So I'm getting bullied on a school bus, and right. um, so I'm always fighting with these kids. And then all of a sudden, you know, the fights led to their their parents beat me up. And, um, you know, I mean, they were beating me up, made me eat dirt and all because, I, you know, they, they had spaghetti for dinner. And I said something about, you know, it tastes like dirt because of the uh, herbs they were using. So right. I didn't know how to express myself. So she took me outside, got me on my hands and knees and fed me dirt. And they said, you know, I'm crying, has snot coming out of my nose and all. You know, you don't forget about these things. So, um, you know, word got out that this was going on. Because social workers come and visit, you know, every month or whatever. And, right. you know, I, I just went and told them what happened. So they end up removing us from the home, put them under investigation and put us in foster care. After that, you know, I don't trust nobody no more. I don't right. trust family. I don't trust friends. I don't trust nobody. So my sister's still young. She's about three, four years old. You know, I'm about seven. So, you know, I we go to the same foster care. This is like a upscale neighborhood in New Jersey. And like they moved us across the bridge because we're from New Jersey. When we okay. were in Pennsylvania, uh, we were staying with our grandparents, my, my other families from uh, Philly. So they moved us back across the bridge. New Jersey took uh, uh, jurisdiction, bought us back. <clears throat> and then uh, we ended up living with this upscale family. And I kept on running away. You know, every chance I get running away from school, running like I didn't care. They had to get the cops to bring me home. My sister was fine. Yeah, they, right. they, tra they treated her like, you know, whatever. She was good. Um, I They end up um, taking me out after like a couple of months of being in there. I kept on running away. Um, they moved me in the group home. This group home um, was brutal. I'm talking about you have kids probably range about my age, eight to about 16 years old, about 20, 30. And they're from all over New Jersey. I mean, everywhere. And they, and you could tell it was just crazy. And then the counselors, you know, they're about 18, 19 years old. They're just, you know, what I mean? young kids taking care of kids. So right. they, didn't, they didn't care what happened. So they round us up in circles, make us fight, you know, for their enjoyment. So, you know, that's, that's, we got to scrapping. We, right. start, we started fighting. So <clears throat> um, I wow. ended up. I end up being very adjusted to that environment now because I felt like, okay, this is what it is. You know, this is like, this is like gl gladiator school, you know? Right. So we're in there, we're fighting, I'm chilling, playing. This is where I learned to play spades, cards, everything, you know, just chilling. And um, they usually have you sit there until, they, until you get good behavior and then you go to another foster care or, you know, they find you somewhere permanent to be. You know, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they, they had counselors take, um, come, um, take you to places. They'll take you, you know, as a group of four to take you here, you know, to, you know, get ice cream or whatever. And this, this is, um, about 1990, I think this is about the time a try called quest came out. Um, okay, the low end theory, low end theory. Yeah. Cause I remember it was always on the radio and I used to just, you know, rap the, the, the lyrics all every day. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. my, my social worker, her name was miss Terry and she, she, <laughs> She was pretty shocked that I knew all the words, but um, but she ended up bringing me to another foster care, and um, uh, this is a guy named Rudy and um, this lady named Barbara. She was a, uh, I think she was a high school principal. I'm not sure she was a principal or teacher. I just remember her taking me to the, to the school. It was a high, uh, I think it was a high school or junior high, and um, it was kind of like East Side High. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was it was crazy. You got to think like early 90s, man. Things were pretty right. wild. And, um, you know, I'm meeting everybody. But it, the cool thing is the older kids were always showing love, like brotherly love. You right. know, it's like they, it, it wasn't like how everything was so divided today. You know, it, it's just you, you did have you did have a respect factor. Like you, you did disrespect your elders. You know, it's like, yo, right. they'll check you. You know, it's like, yo, you can't talk to her like that. You can't talk to her like that. You know, so that they'll check you. I, you know, and I just remember, you know, learning some rules and respect because it's it's almost like prison in a way. You gotta you gotta learn respect because if you don't, you cross some lines. You're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get checked. And um, it took years to get back home. And I I remember you know finally, um, the the last the last foster care that I was in, um, the family was was good. They were good to me. Um, not like the other, other families, um, prior, 
this right. the, the you know I wanted to stay with this family, but my father actually got his stuff together and got us back. It took a long time because you know it had to go from visitations at the um at the Dyfus Center, and then it came to having day visits. I mean, it was a long process to get back in, um, and then I haven't seen my sister in years. The one that stayed with my aunt, yes. and um, you know, like I said, man, getting back and just I didn't want to be with my father anymore. At, wow, after because being, you didn't relate to him because you couldn't relate to him no it, more. It, it, it wasn't because I couldn't relate to him; it's because I, I looked at him as a failure. Like you know, like yo, you, I had to go through all this. Where were you? Not knowing what was going on, just I looked at him as right. a failure. Like you, right. you wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? And then I wanted, you know, my mother wasn't never there. She was gone. She didn't come back to my life until I was about a junior in high school. And um, so that's that's what that happened. And that does traumatize you, yo. I mean, it it does right. it does affect you mentally. And then you know, I was lucky to get out after two two and a half years. But I can only imagine people who stick longer. You know, had to oh, go so through all the of this happened in a two year time span for the other yeah. Year. yeah two so two really two and a half. You went and got mentally disturbed way quick, and then you went right back yes. to the real world. It, 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 you you hit the nail on the head because I couldn't be in regular classes anymore. Right, your your mind it, state was like a prisoner now, like you've been to prison. Right, exactly. So they had to put me in emotionally disturbed classes from fourth all the way up to high school. But you know that's <clears> something <throat> that they always do, right? They if they can't mm -hmm. understand you, they put you in special ed in the back out the way. Yeah, that's what they did. I was I was a behavior kid, and then um, you know, like I said, I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. So, right, you know, being being in those classes, you meet other kids that are you know not stable like that either, and right. you know, so I'm I'm around gangsters and gang leaders and 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 people who you know have connections out out in the street. So I you know being in that environment, I wasn't that type of guy. I wasn't the kid that would go out there and wreck havoc on society but i was around the people who did right so it's kind of like it was a gift and a curse at the same time because i, I got a lot of influence off of it but it was a blessing at the same time because i was good wherever i went right um if that makes sense um but well, you know i i can only imagine someone who's been through it long term you're, you're going to be institutionalized you, you, there's nothing right. like if you have no parents you can't trust family and friends no more if your foster parents ain't if your foster parents ain't good to you, then you're pretty much raising yourself. So who what authority could tell you what to do? Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like what what authority can give you, you know, the, the answers or whatever when you've been surviving on your own the whole time? So you right. do you do build this superior complex. Like yeah. I'm the Can I'm the man. ask you a question? Uh-huh. Richie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you said that you looked at your dad as a failure. I did. And things. Now, we know when you're young, we're dumb, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't even understand really the meaning of life until we get older and we see things play out. Mm -hmm. Now, did you come to terms with your father like hey my father had a breakdown i mean he wasn't strong that don't mean that he didn't love me uh, did you how is your relationship with your dad now um my father passed away back in 2008 um i was 20, mm -hmm. i was 24 when he passed away um but at that time when i got out of foster care to that point uh, we had a very rocky relationship. I was kicked out of my house at 15, 16 um, over something very small. And then it was always protecting my little sister. I was always very protected over her. Like if my dad would yell at her, you know, it was it was me and him in face to face arguments. Um, <clears throat> we we didn't have a good relationship to after he divorced my uh, stepmother. Um, he, he, he actually remarried later. And then, you know, that's when I had my stepbrothers and sisters later on in life, but, um, and then I have a half sister from that. So, um, we didn't have much of a relationship. I thought he was always trying to like, prov um, provoke me. Um, I don't know. I, I carry his name and everything. Um, but he was always on drugs. He, he didn't, he never got it together. He, he actually got worse. He, he actually died of a drug overdose. 
Oh man, so y'all never got a chance to really have a nah. man to man talk. <laughs> no, we never had that. No, we actually got in a fight. The the day I left, um, the week before I left for the military, me and him got into a really bad fight. Mm. Um, and I left and I didn't hear from him for about three three months until because you know they didn't have cell phones at the time. Um, it was all pay phones and uh, call mm -hmm. cards at the, at that time. Um, so I had no way to connect with him, and I was in Missouri at the time. What's your um, position with your mom's right now? Um, we don't talk. I haven't talked to her since 2006. Um, she's she lives in New York City. She's a she's got businesses. She was oh, it was always about money with her. Okay, um, would you consider your mom part of the problem? What's that? I'm sorry, cut off. Is it your mom part of the problem? You think she's part of the blame, or is it just strictly with pops? You know, I think. I, I, like like April said, you know, it's like you you come to the realization later in life. Um, you're like I didn't understand when I was a kid, mm -hmm. but now I'm I'm starting to think that it was just life, just life taking a toll on them. Okay, um, you know, it, it, it's because you know I start I'm starting to to sympathize with with that situation because of how life was treating me. Um, it's like wow, I could have went that direction easily, you know. Right. <clears throat> um, it's just that. One good thing my dad did was he made me work. Um, you know, we didn't have money growing up, so we was out. Me and my brother and sisters, we were outside in the heat, crushing cans to to make money. Yeah, like we, <laughs> it was like this I big twenty pound cylinder. Yeah, just crushing cans and I like to pancakes, <clears throat> all that. Yeah, fix fix lawnmowers, all that. Whatever he could teach us as far as those traits is, I, I give thanks to my father. It's it's to making us hard workers. I always thought he was trying to slave us, but man, he um he he made us work. And and it paid so off. So you can see the good in him now. I, I could yeah, you I can, do I do think you that can part. see the good in him. Mm -hmm. And see that's what I always tell people. Cause I know I I had life really messed up mm -hmm. until you get older and you start seeing things and getting an understanding right. and you're like man i don't know nothing i yeah. don't know nothing i agree with that but we're too busy we always want to find the bad in people it's like why can't we just find the good in them because there's some good in people you we know, just don't want to see it you you, you want to know something crazy, April? Um, mm -hmm. I joined them. I went. I went to. I joined. I, I was telling. Um, uh, is that how you uh, want me to pronounce it? Black money. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was telling Black money. Um, you know, I I went to college in two thousand. Went to Rutgers. Um, I didn't mm -hmm. have enough money to pay for it, so I ended up going to the military in uh, two thousand one. Um, uh, when I during the military. I had joined a state institution. It's a um, it's like a behavior health um, institution. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's right out of New Jersey. Um, it yeah. housed about 800, 800 um, men and women, and they had mm -hmm. mental uh, just disability, mental health problems, whatever. That yeah. is what that that place right there is what helped me in my life because I, I got to see everything from the other side. I got right. to see. I got to see everything those counselors were doing. I got to see what the foster care parents how they really felt if they really empathized. And you know what? It's like I don't. I don't have that in me to to want to manipulate people or or you know do anybody wrong. It's like I have that drive to help somebody, but I don't. I don't mm. tell anybody. You know, it's just I. I just have it in my heart because I know. It's like man, I know what these guys are going through. Every single one of them. And <clears throat> you know, I think that was a blessing too. Is that is when I worked there. I don't know how I got that job. I went to a party one time. Some guy told me about it, and he said, "Just go apply." <laughs> and then right. I don't know. It just I don't. Uh, it just I just end up there, and I ended up there for thirteen years. And then because I, I tell what, what I tell people, like my dad was a great dad. But mm -hmm. also, my dad was manic, depressive, and schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. So we went through some stuff. Oh, I believe it. You know. But he was still my dad. And I, I, I looked at the good. Even though I, we saw him jump out of windows and 
and different kind of things. I mean, I used to bite my nails down to the nuts, mm -hmm. but I never hurt my mother. My mother never talked bad about my father. None of my mother's people, I mean, we were, he was going to institutions, Mantino places mm -hmm. for years, but I never heard not one person say a bad thing about my father. Yeah, see, you know, I, I, did he always and have... See, that's did, did that's he, did he, where the problem lies, too, with our community. Because somebody, they should have been telling you, you know, your father loves you. He just don't have it together right now. You know, you said he had a nervous breakdown. Everybody has a breaking point. Mm -hmm. They've got a breaking point. And if you don't have the right people around you, you just screwed to. You're right. So, you, gotta have a, you have to have a good support system. You have to have those people around you. So with this foster care thing and with Nature Boy in this combination, See, the foster care thing is that, you know, it's it's almost like a false belief. You know, you, like when they put you in that first home, you feel like you're protected. OK, I'm away from this environment. But it's, it, you, mm -hmm. you know, you, you grow up so fast as a little kid. Like it, it's it's almost like light years of it, I don't know. It's like. Experience just hits you like 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 real hard as a kid, you know, it's just it hits yeah. you. And, and now it's like, OK, you know what? You can't manipulate me. You're like my parents. You're like this person. You're like that person. I didn't trust nobody. I didn't care if you were police. I didn't trust you. <clears throat> you know, like everybody say, oh, you got to trust the police or you got to trust the fireman. Or you, I didn't trust any, not even the school teachers. The school teachers didn't get respect because you were adult. I, I didn't believe you. And I just saw that school had rules and everything just, I just saw everything that was just, was not real. I'm telling you, it alters your reality as a kid. Like you're, you're supposed to be playing Ninja Turtles or, you know, Hot Wheel cars in your room. But I'm trying to figure out ways to get out. You know, I'm trying to find yeah. how to get home or, you know, um, how to get away from these people. Hey, Black Money, that's deep, ain't it? Yeah, and um, that's, that's deep. And that's what we was talking about when we were saying that. That's what no nature boy was just experiencing, and then he's thrust into this um seat of power. We got the it's like when they say the inmates are tucked over the prison, it's like now he's in power, so he didn't yeah. know how to react to that anyway. See, yeah, that's the thing though. See, power it comes with a lot of responsibility. I'm sure we all heard that saying so many times. Um, but we didn't grow up with responsibilities like that. So when you right. have power without responsibilities, how do you how do you attain such a thing? You know. And the it's, family dynamics too. Family dynamics is crazy. Right. And 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 the first structure you're supposed to learn is, is in your family. There's ranks, you know, your mm -hmm. mother and father are, are the generals, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just they're just ranks upon ranks, and that's just how society is structured. But that mm -hmm. structure is already torn apart as soon as you leave that family structure. Foster homes mm -hmm. are only temporary. In group home, you got so many people trying to be alpha in there that you know it's it's impossible to, you know. To really characterize your where your position, right? <clears throat> so, boy, can you relate to Nature Boy? See, I, I haven't kept, I haven't kept up in his case, um, to 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 really know what he's been through. But if it's okay, anything, well, anybody that uh -huh. came through the foster care system, how how old was he? Nature Boy. Oh, was Nature Boy. I mean, he was in him all old. his life. One years old. Uh, wow. One year old. So he, uh, whew, that's tough. I mean, because he didn't even experience family structure even from the beginning. At least, no, I, no. At least I had that. Yeah. Um, right. And then you know going through that and wow, that's that's tough. Yeah. So he he automatically from the jump, um, didn't experience any type of structure at all. And 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 foster care, you know, they don't the parents don't love you unconditionally like that. 
there's you know it's, there's no love uh, you're right some some parents do collect the check some people try to love the child but they can't um yeah what he went through is probably i would say a lot of the the, the children that i've seen in the group home go through because they've been through it you know since mm -hmm. you know young buck <clears throat> The group on kids, they be having a, a hell of a fight game. They squabble game be on a thousand because they got to fight for everything they get. And then they be kind of intuitive and smart because, like you said, it makes you not want to trust nobody. It's it's right. like it's it's almost like it's almost like jail, man, because right. when you when you in there, you have to you have to click up. You have to click up with somebody. You can't do it by yourself because it, the rotations are, are constant in group homes. You got one person going out, one coming in, one going out, one coming in. Um, two people might go out, five might come in, depending on you know whatever room they have. So I'm I'm constantly seeing, I'm constantly making you know friends with two dudes, and then those two dudes are gone in a week, and then now I'm by I'm by myself. Now I have to squabble up again. So you're constantly in a fight, and somebody's always trying to bully somebody. Right, because everybody <coughs> getting bullied, so everybody want to be an alpha. Right. Everybody, wanna everybody be want to be the bully. Yeah, yeah everybody, everybody wants to be the man in there. Yeah, it's it's well, it yeah, don't really, matter. They want to be the bully like they run in the group home, and I'm right. the man. Really hurt. Everybody want to hurt like hurt people like they hurt it. Mm -hmm. Go sit over right. there. And not only that, you got to think too is that you know you see someone coming in that's just like you, so it's like oh, you know okay. it's like you know, that was you know it's like. Too. So the feeling of that day, okay, did you feel like you was on the lower rung of society when you was in um the group home? You, you said you said what now? I'm on the wrong on the lower rung. Did you feel like you was like at the bottom when you were there? Ah, man. Where you, I, you know what? I I I I was just mostly in fear all the time. Um mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think I would I, I associate myself with a status or anything like that. Like right. um I think I was too immature to really think of ranks like that. I mean, I'm older now, so I look at it that way. But in that in that time, uh, I was I was always in fear. So my adrenaline was constant, constant. Just um, oh, so you kind of had had bad nerves at all at all times. Yeah, yeah. It was always just you know, right. like somebody somebody would come in, you know, talk to me some type of way. Like you know, it may not even be serious, but when they talk to me a certain way, I automatically think they're ready to gun for me. So I'm already plotting in my head what I'm going to do to this person if they try to do it, you know. Okay. So it's <clears throat> so wow. It's, so it's you know it's <clears throat> it does give you a sense of power hey, later. Man, I wish there were, I wish there was another yeah. person maybe in this channel that that was you know that if they were in foster care they could speak on it too because it's just it's deep. Yeah, I was in a um, yeah, care, but... and this is what I try to tell people. You know, they want to look at Nature Boy as he was crazy, uh, irresponsible. First of all, the boy was never loved. Nah, right. uh -uh. Uh, not not unconditionally. To, right. He had to fight to survive. Hey, hey boy, I'm going to have to wrap this up too, fam. Yeah, yeah, no problem, man. We got family on the um, camera coming in. We got some family okay. coming over. But it's definitely a good talk, and um, I'm... it was good, Richie. Um, yeah, it was good. Was We're gonna have to do crazy, another yeah. show. I wonder why I couldn't share this show to my platform. You're on StreamYard, right? Yeah, I'm on StreamYard. Okay, right. Richie, it was nice talking to you. Me too, uh, BMC. You got to do another show so we can talk about this. Hey, okay. yo, money. I, I I followed you, so I subscribed. So we're we're good. Yeah. Man, so and uh, follow me too. I, okay, yeah, I'll look for you and I'll follow. We to talk about real life issues over here. Yeah, that okay. was a good. That was a good one right there, Richard. It's, but it, it'll make you think about the kid, uh, uh, Nature Boy, what he went through, and now that's yeah. why he was just a product of his environment. Yeah, Do you definitely. Think it scarred I, you? Did you? Did it scar you a lot mentally, Rich? Yeah, it still does to this day, man. It, it you know, it, it doesn't go away. I mean, time time heals everything. I think that's the only thing because there's not enough therapy classes or nothing to deal with it. It just, you know, just keep on. You got. I just keep on working and keep on fighting and keep on educating myself. Um, that's the that's only right. way. And then keep on and keep on praying. That's that's it. That's right, Richie. Um, 
Thanks for coming through. We're gonna wrap this up, y'all. Thanks for everybody showing their support. April no showers. Doubt. We're looking out. Yeah, yeah, yo. Be easy, man. <laughs>